Thank you, everybody, for coming here, joining us. Hello, world. Uh, we are joining uh, here Elena Hasnash, another artist, uh, to uh, exhibit uh, her own work, her uh, own ideas, her concepts, uh, stories about her and her life. Um, she will try to speak as loud as she can <laughs> because, unfortunately, during summer, some people have throat, throat problems, therefore uh, she will be a little bit uh, um, quieter. quieter, yes. Um, I'm Diana Roman, Geo Arts Gallery Shanghai. We are here again uh, at the 8th Place Art Center. Uh, we welcome everybody here and uh, fa fans from all over the world. Uh, we're, con we're continuing the series of artist talks with Elena. Ha hello, Elena. Hello. So, <laughs> hoping that you are okay and, and uh, with a strong enough voice to uh, to do it. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, I would like to start asking you um, the same question that I asked uh, the other uh, artists. How did it start? When did you realize? you are going to be an artist? <laughs> it's one of the hardest and easiest questions ever. Um, hard because, I mean, we don't really realize it, you know? But it's easy because actually I know now that I had it in me ever since I was born. I had it in me, but I found out only later when I looked back into my childhood and I realized, oh yeah, look, I was very good at painting in my kindergarten. I was very good at painting in my art in my class in school, and so on and so on and so on. And when when I look from here back then, I realized, oh yeah, I was artist all the time alone. But I realized only now. Have your uh, parents kept uh, you know, drawings or whatever paintings, whatever you have done uh, since childhood? I have no idea. But I do have one painting which participated in an exhibition, and somehow it survived. Wow. <laughs> from school, yeah. So this is great that. for your memories and for your kids as well. Yeah, yeah. To, to preserve. I'm asking that because recently my, my sister just uh, discovered uh, a bunch of uh, uh, drawings from when we were very little. So I said, oh my God, <laughs> keep them, keep yeah, them. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. So yes, uh, art was, uh, was something that you had uh, deep within your being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've had it, and not just art, but also crafts as well. I remember being so curious about macrame. Oh, know? yes. Doing meetings, yes. Uh, knitting as well. I was doing photography courses when I was in, uh, also in school. I have done, I don't know how do you call this, like uh, you take the leather, leather and you make things from leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've done that yeah. too, so um, I mean, I've done the sewing classes, I've done a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have to tell uh, people present here and um, uh, in front of uh, the camera that uh, we are coming from uh, uh, Romania, uh, a country with uh, powerful traditions in terms of uh, um, crafts uh, like you know knitting, uh, like weaving, like uh, uh, rug, uh, rugs, uh, uh, yes. you know a lot yeah. of uh, uh, techniques uh, involving textiles and uh, fabrics and embroidery. Uh, therefore, being uh, uh, in our childhood, we were surrounded by these all these uh, crafts, mm -hmm. and somehow these influence later our on art. our yes, art. I can find so many things. I mean, even I don't do it intentionally, but then when I finish the painting and I realize, oh my God, I see the rug craft in there, or right. I see some embroidery craft in there. I can still find this ethical in, you know, factor very strong in my art. Yeah. Uh, I would also like to uh, say a few words about Elena. Elena Hasnash is a professional multidisciplinary artist currently working as artist in resident at YCEF. She graduated from Fine Arts Academy and has over 15 years of experience in the art, in art field. Her artworks being exhibited and featured in various art publications across Europe and Asia. 
Inspired by everything she sees, feels and experiences, Elena's life is a constant contemplation of the world and a continuous path to herself, to self-discovery through art. So, such a beautiful uh, description. Uh, it's obvious uh, that you are a very sensitive person, attracted somehow to um, inner thoughts, to inner, to, to inner discoveries uh, of, your, uh, of yourself and, and to what surrounds you and probably mm, nature, beauty, beauty in itself, right? Yeah, I'm very inspired. Uh, I have an affinity for trees. And it's not just the above word, but to me it's more interesting what goes on the ground because somehow it's like a parallel world, you know, and I feel like sometimes like we don't know what's going on in there and I'm more interested in that part. So I guess this is also the way that you're saying it. I like the beauty of it all, but I always look into the side. What's at the root of each thing? That's so. very important because the tree uh, has, it's, it's a, a powerful symbol, not only in art, but in life, yeah, yeah. life it has strong roots. It has a body, a strong body, yeah. and it has branches that would make connections to other stuff. So, yeah. trees uh, are uh, obviously um, expressing life itself. Yeah, yeah. But seriously, I'm inspired by, ev by kind of everything that I see. That as long as there is an emotional connection to my state of being right now. Yes. Then I connect with things, you know, like it can be a, I don't know, an old house, oh I love it, it can be, or a special like, I don't know, blouse, or, or a, a color by itself. If I feel an emotional connection in that place, then I'm inspired and then I can really take it and do something else with it. So. I would love to see some of your images uh, with, uh, with trees. And I know you have some some paintings uh, uh, of trees, very interesting uh, mm, renderings, uh, uh, portraits. I would say somehow ethnical portraits of trees. Yeah. Uh, but uh, how? Uh, tell us first how uh, how did it start? It. I mean, in uh, what what were your first artworks? You know, you said you probably have one. Uh, um, painting from your childhood, but maybe from from your debut as an artist or when when you uh, studied. Uh, art. Well, um, actually, when you study, it's mostly about the challenges that the teachers give you. It's not about you as you. You don't know yourself yet. It's it's true. Yeah, I yeah. know. Uh, and only later, um, you kind of get lost after you study. You, you get lost. You don't know what's happening you are and everything so uh, I started very shy <laughs> I can show you yes. very shy I started with uh, very simple um, graphite drawings of, uh -huh. of cats illustrations of oh. cats yeah. oh, that's me. the beginnings and the search very simple illustrations of cats uh, very very simple trying mm -hmm. to in a way going a little bit with the Chinese um, yes, uh, yes, style, it, which, yeah, which is yeah. clean. So this was um, a very shy, I would say, beginning. To but it's very expressive in terms of uh, capturing the expressivity of the cats. You know. Yeah, and actually the theme of cats is kind of recurrent. I have it later in an ethnic style as well. Uh -huh. I feel like sometimes I'm going in circles. You know, mm -hmm. like there's some themes that I keep on repeating. You know, but mm -hmm. in a different style, a different way, you know, anyways, yeah. Well, so. those are, I mean, some of them, the, the, the one in the, in the lower uh, corner uh, left one, mm -hmm. there was, there were few lines and then you captured the expression of the yeah. cat. Yeah. And well, this is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I, I, yeah. would, I would pet them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's just, um, I mean, trying to keep it clean and not overdo it and yeah. just, Definitely. In, time, in, ter in terms of drawing, it's better to, to keep it clean. Yeah, yeah. Um, and later, mm -hmm. we started with some color. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been there. Birds, flowers and things. <laughs> uh, trying some Yeah, we, we trying all start at right? some point. I remember, um, I remember after uh, uh, graduation, uh, I graduated art history, but 
we had uh, a painting class mm -hmm. uh, and we had to do some Renaissance portraits that, that was very difficult for us but after that I would do uh, paint portraits of our kids yeah. and, and watercolor and then flowers to, uh, to give to, 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 as gift to, to the educators and instructors of, oh, in kindergarten. So yes, I think everybody has this kind of... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just uh, chose a few just to show that uh, in case you're a beginning artist, don't worry, it's fine. It's good. <laughs> yeah. You're on a good track. It happens to absolutely everybody. Uh, it's kind it's of necessity as, as I as well, yeah. It's like you dip your toes in different waters and see which one is okay for you. So I've tried quite a few, playing with shadows, playing with the uh, it's called light. Still lights. Actually I was I'm not Picasso, okay, but I have my blue period. <laughs> <laughs> so I was very much um, interested in blue color because it was one of the for me <coughs> personally sorry <coughs> it was very hard to make the shading in blue it doesn't it's not controlled easy yeah color. you add too much white you're off you add too much black or something you're off so what do you do and then I was play, playing with the shades to make it leaf you know mm -hmm. so this was my blue <laughs> very short period. Yeah. <laughs> Good. It's, a, it's still experimenting with yeah. uh, with blue and what happens uh, to <coughs> this color when you uh, yeah. try to have a, a shade or a, yeah, a light yeah. on it. Yeah. Um, it was a very nice experiment, uh, to be sure. And of course, I mean, who yeah. doesn't do these? Yeah. Some plein air, some uh, plein airs and landscapes, and uh, some of them are from the Danube. This is from Nistro, the, the river. I mean, they're all different, but um, trying to catch the nature. Yeah. Uh, plein airs are not easy. The, ch the nature doesn't sit well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if it's a windy day, uh, yeah. I, uh, I believe it's not uh, so, easy at all. So, yeah, it's, uh, I, from this perspective, you start to really admire the masters like Monet and yeah, the, right. the, the way they would capture capture things very fast so yeah but it was a great experience and actually for these some of them are done not with the brush uh, I had my little period of painting with forks wow with forks with forks ah. plastic forks you uh -huh. know the ones that you have like uh -huh. yeah, I think so I saw a video of yours I have it yes on yeah. YouTube yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's actually I'm that one I think we would, we would the three, these three are done with forks. We also insert the link of your YouTube uh, account. Uh, yeah, 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 sure. this yeah, video. yeah, So it was another experiment to see what it does because uh, the, br the brush is one thing when you're used to it, but when you're, you want to kind of try something new and see how it goes. So this was a very cool fork experience. Yeah, <laughs> it's very interesting about <laughs> this kind of, yeah. uh, so it's, um, uh, uh, it's an element that you use uh, frequently, uh, still use frequently in your artwork, uh, which are other elements that, uh, like techniques, uh, apart from aeroplastic fork, what other things uh, you use in terms of uh, completing yeah. an, uh, a painting? I'm, I, th I don't know, like when, I th when I, people ask me what kind of an artist are you, and I always say, I'm the crazy curious one. <laughs> That's like good. seriously, I am kind of crazy. I can pretty much paint with anything. Yeah. That's great. I've tried it, seriously. You name it, I've tried it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's also partially because of my work as well, which is great uh, to be artist in residence at YCF and working with kids of different ages. You have to be level creative. up yes. the game. Well. You have to um, be able to surprise the kids and give them opportunities to be creative and therefore I have to be open to any kind of possibilities like painting with vegetables, painting with yeah. sticks, painting, making our own brushes from leaves mm -hmm. and flowers, mm -hmm. that, a lot of things, you know, so of course all of my creativity poured into my activity as an artist in residence gets into my art as well, hence I have the paintings done with a fork, mm -hmm. which is just a small part of... Uh, That's excellent, uh, excellent stuff. <laughs> yes. Um, let me see what was next. 
Oh, my winter period. <laughs> I don't like cold. Mm. I just don't. And um, but I'm a positive person. And I was trying to make winter look pretty <laughs> to me, yeah. to make it more appealing. So I have like a series of uh, paintings based on winter. And also, you can see even the palette is kind of similar. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, Yes, yeah, greyish. Yeah. yeah, so it was a whole um, winter. Um, yeah, I've done mm. a series of them. Also, at the very beginning. Yeah. It's important to pass through um, every stage of, uh, let's say, nature uh, in, in paintings to, to experiment and feel, yeah. uh, see where, uh, where you feel comfortable with uh, and what you want to do next or if you want to go towards abstraction mm -hmm. because I know uh, that abstraction is something that you're very dynamic uh, uh, and very um, very playful. Yeah, that's a very good word. <laughs> we do have some, some of your works here yeah, that I really yeah. love and uh, I'm, uh, I'm glad you, you accepted our invitation to, to be featured in this uh, exhibition. Oh, um, yeah, so um, I would want to say that um, the more I was painting, the more I was creating, I realized that I, there's one element that never, never leaves my art, uh, and that's the heritage, the ethnic roots that I have. And sometimes I want to get away from it, but I cannot. Mm -hmm. I love, even through my older or newer pieces, I can still even if others maybe don't see, I still see it. I can relate to my background. Um, and I find it's beautiful, actually. That's very important. Uh, the purity beautiful. of ethnic art. Yeah, I mean, right. it has been with us for so many years, and I think there is a reason why right. it was for so many years. The right. purity of it, yeah. right? And the honesty of it, you know? So probably um, that's what... Uh, Makes yeah, it strong. Yeah. I, I like having, I, I'm so kind of happy that I, I, can, I can see it, you know. Mm -hmm. It makes me, I don't know, not question my identity. Like, you know, like I'm not looking for it. It's I know always exactly about remember, blood. Yeah, yeah. remembering who we are, where, where we left from, and what's in, uh, of course, in our blood. That's what I, I always want. And as I'm being here in, 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 in China as a, a Romanian, I'll try to to do whatever I can to promote the culture, uh, our Romanian culture and Romanian artists, uh, because there there's a, there, there's a beauty in it. And somehow I discovered that there is a, um, a very powerful similarity between uh, the Paleolithic culture in in uh, Yash in in uh, a northern part of, of uh, Romania. Uh, that is a, a culture, no, it's Neolithic uh, culture, Stone Age culture, let's say, Kukuten, uh, uh, with uh, Han culture or something, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, around Shanghai area, again, Neolithic culture. They have the same patterns, almost identical patterns on uh, ceramic, uh, on vases, and yeah. somehow you understand at some point when this world started to form, the mind was the same. The people mm -hmm. would uh, think the same, would decorate the same. And uh, it's very interesting to see those connections. We are so far from each other. And then, uh, but we have similarities, powerful similarities in our culture from very, very ancient times. And that's, that's, I think that's important to, mm -hmm. be, to be told to the world. Yeah, yeah. So, showing my ethnical inspirations, very cute little paintings. Actually, this is part of a series. It's called uh, Childhood Memories. Uh huh. And very uh, joyful, very and colorful. Um, for example, the first one, the bird. It's actually called the migrant. Uh huh. So, um, technically, it's kind of a representation of me, kind of, or mm -hmm. any other person migrating. Uh, changing their place of life or where they live yes. and still having the colors of their country and their shoulders proud and um, 
the motives from the motives from Romanian ethnic styles. So I'm also very happy that this painting was actually uh, featured in one of the uh, ASPZ uh, magazines for oh. the heritage issue. Wow, great. I was very honored really uh, because it's not exactly a um, publication material. But they like the story so much behind it, uh, so they, you know. Yes, uh, I mean, uh, the story is important. Uh, they, what represent represents uh, a freedom. As a bird always would represent freedom. Just thinking of Konstantin Brunkush that uh, one would, uh, would have seen uh, some pieces here in Shanghai at the Pompidou uh, branch uh, here. Um, so. The idea of the bird represents uh, obvious freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, in uh, every uh, mm, culture, you would see a bird featured uh, um, the symbol, this symbol of freedom, the symbol of beauty. Like in, in Chinese uh, uh, culture, we see a lot of birds like like uh, um, cranes uh, well. uh, and the. Um, uh, uh, peacock. peacock. Uh, so birds would always have an important role uh, uh, within a community. It uh, it's the aspiration of of uh, uh, lightness, of flight, of uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. freedom. Yeah. And this is the symbol, together with uh, the Romanian motifs, uh, folkloric motifs. Yeah. Yeah. And my grandma, she used to actually make rugs. I remember her doing that. And I remember when I was going to her house, she would have this beautiful like rugs on the floor and on the walls as well. Mm -hmm. And the patterns, I, I tried to, I mean, they're still with me. And I was just trying to do the lazy cat mm -hmm. on the Romanian yes, pattern rugs. Right. And as well, the, the teapot. I have a thing with, I have a thing with teapots, I have to confess. I like tea ceremony and teapot. All the best stories I've ever heard were done around the big teapot yes. and some candies around mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. um, that's part of my childhood and there's many more others. But this is just to give you a look uh, mm -hmm. of uh, my childhood memory, memories uh, series all done in ethnic style. The thing is, once I've been doing this, um, it evolved kind of into new things, you know, so kind of at least I can see um, a continuation of how it evolved into lullabies for trees. I, I told you that I like trees a lot. Yes. So lullabies for trees happened. Wow. And this one also is a funny, I mean, I like it. I mean, to me it was like, I believe trees are alive. I mean, we already know that, but when I was a kid, I mean, I didn't, I did not know that. They were talking um, to you. <laughs> yeah, like I, I used to think that I'm like a tree whisperer, you know, and I would um, climb to the trees out sing to the trunk a song and I would imagine that like oh if I sing a song to this tree tonight the tree's gonna have a great dream you know <laughs> beautiful and then that story is still with me and now I mean I'm painting stories of what would the dreams be of the trees so if I would sing a lullaby to a tree what would they dream beautiful. and then the dream would be kind of imprinted in their skin in their on their trunk so that's I mean I have different uh, Lullabies. <laughs> Beautiful the trees, yeah. Some of them are uh, exhibited in an online uh, yes, yes, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Because um, there are uh, there are so so interesting how um, uh, you mix uh, nature, but it's the the, the, the synthetic image of, of trees, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of an ab abstraction. It's nature, but it's abstraction altogether and geometry. And then I uh, I love the harmony of these and mm -hmm. uh, how musical they are and, and specifically the title lullabies for trees it's yeah. a, it's a, it's amazing. Yeah. Do you write for poetry? I do. Oh, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Confessing the scene right away. Uh, that's the thing. Uh, not just poetry, but also I compose songs. In really? fact, uh, music for me. Uh, I mentioned to you earlier. Yeah. Um, uh, it's. It was the primary form of, our, of art. Um, I kind of was sure that I'm going to go for music, um, but then destiny decided otherwise. Um, so music and poetry and 
visual arts, they kind of have a thing going on in my life. Right. <laughs> it's like one of the three always uh, predominating. So yeah, um, music, you can always kind of find it either in the names or in the paintings themselves that there is a connection to music. Even the paintings exhibited here, mm -hmm. uh, listening to, they're connected to, to music as well. So That's normal, as, as we already know. Uh, a lot of artists uh, explained uh, mm -hmm. about Kandinsky, about the harmony right, 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 in, right. in art yeah. and uh, how much their paintings were were connected to, to, to musical harmonies. Therefore, yeah. that's yeah. great. Yeah. So, so these are my lullabies for trees. And oh, I had a, a little um, <laughs> experiment. <laughs> um, but it's somehow yeah. connected. If it is. If the you, colors are still the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and somehow you can you can uh, decipher uh, uh, if if you are having a, an, an eye for for capturing uh, reality, you can decipher the trees somehow mm -hmm. in here. Yeah. Well, it was a game, and actually uh, this one as well. Uh, I was trying with the material. It was Indian ink. Ah. So it's not watercolor, it's not markers, it's not acrylic, it was Indian ink. And it doesn't read well on the screen, but it's kind of translucent. Uh -huh. So it, it has yeah, the... It, you can see a little bit, yeah. Uh, the mos not the mosaic, how do you call the glass painting mm -hmm, effect a mm -hmm, little bit. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very pretty. And yeah, there's more of those. Mm -hmm. So in some you can see some shapes of flowers, maybe here and there, maybe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a fish if you see it. Interesting. So it's a lot of nature and elements. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, come together. <laughs> uh, definitely uh, a very uh, dynamic way of interpreting uh, reality. <laughs> and you. colorful. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and then, as I said, I'm a curious artist, so I kind of move on with my curiosity. <laughs> so it's uh, it's obviously so far we've seen the uh, starting points with uh, you know very a normal very realistic uh, uh, a way of rendering uh, nature, but now we we can see a versatile artist trying uh, to show us uh, a lot of uh, uh, facets of uh, her expressions uh, uh, through art, and therefore. Uh, uh, either realistic uh, or uh, abstract for art is very interesting. Thank you.